إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد My brothers and sisters it is important that Muslims in this time and especially in this time that we learn those means and those asbab that will enable us to remain steadfast and firm upon this deen. And that is because the Muslims in this time and especially the shabab, especially the youth, they are faced with tribulations and trials from every direction. Trials that cause them to doubt the sunnah or doubt the truth of Islam even. Trials and tribulations and doubts that cause them to doubt the nobility and the excellence and the virtue of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Or those trials and those fitan and that tribulation that leads them to sins, committing major sins, the kabair, and acts of disobedience to Allah and to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or those trials that lead them to despair at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such that you find many of the shabab, even amongst the Muslims, that they lose hope in life and they lose hope in living. And that's why you find, especially in the lands of the West, in those lands where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not truly worshipped or, or he is worshipped by a few, that you find in these lands despair, anxiety, depression, suicide, self-harming, because these are from the trials that are present in the lands and in the times that we live in. These trials have become even more widespread in this age of social media. People who are taught to chase the dunya. People who are taught to please the crowd. So this age is truly an age of the strangers. The age of the ghuraba. And they are few in number, yet they are firm and they are steadfast, even as everything around them begins to crumble and fall apart, that they remain steadfast as mountains. It is reported from Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, that Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Bada al Islamu gariba, wa sayyaudu gariba. Islam began as something strange and it shall return just as it began as something strange. So glad tidings. Tuba, as occurs in a hadith of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a tree in Jannah. So he said Tuba lil ghuraba. It is a tree in Jannah whose trunk is made out of gold. Many of the scholars, they have said that this Tuba is a Bushra, is a glad tiding from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is indicative of Jannah, meaning that Jannah, glad tidings, and a tree in Jannah is for those who are the strangers that establish the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tuba lil ghuraba. He said, glad tidings of paradise are for the strangers. 
Imam Tirmidhi has a different version of the hadith, of the hadith which finishes Fatuba lil ghuraba alladhina yuslihuna ma afsad al-nas min ba'di min sunnati Glad tidings of Jannah of Tuba is for the strangers Fatuba lil ghuraba So this Tuba or these glad tidings are for the strangers alladhina yuslihuna those who rectify what the people have corrupted after me from my sunnah. These are the people who rectify, they correct, they don't fall apart. They don't doubt. They don't follow their desires, nor do they follow the desires of others. They are the ones who rectify what the people have corrupted from the sunnah of Allah's messenger from guidance. That which he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, left his ummah upon. So among the means that will bring about this firmness, this thabat, that each and every one of us seeks and desires, because that is what will keep us steadfast in our graves, steadfast, yawm al qiyamah, and earn us salvation from the fire. From those affairs, there are six. First of them, that we are to learn the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, learn the religion, and act upon that which you learn. And that is to study the book of Allah, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his seerah, his biography, his life. And to understand the way of the sahaba radiallahu anhum, and those who followed them from the sahaba, ridwanullahi alayhim. Because they are the jama'ah. The jama'ah are the sahaba. And those who followed them. And then those who followed them. The first three generations. They are the jama'ah. Beginning with the sahaba radiallahu anhum. And they are awla. They are the most deserving of the title of al-jama'ah. And whoever follows their path is guided. And whoever follows a path other than theirs. Or whomsoever opposes their path, opposes the path of the Sahaba and the early Salaf, then they are destroyed. Just as Imam Malik said, that the latter part of this Ummah will not be rectified except by that which rectified its first part. And he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, that the Sunnah is the Safina of Nuh, that the Sunnah is the Ark of Noah. Whomsoever embarked upon it was saved. And whomsoever was left behind was drowned. So the sunnah is like that. Whoever embarks upon it and takes to it and follows it, he's saved. And whomsoever is left behind, who rejects the sunnah, leaves the sunnah, abandons the sunnah, then he is drowned, meaning that he is destroyed. And the Prophet wasallam himself said, that I've left among you two things. If you hold on to them, you will never go astray. Kitab Allah, the book of Allah, was sunnati and my sunnah. If you hold on to this affair, the sunnah of Allah's messenger, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you worship Allah, you are obedient to him, and you learn that, and you act upon that, then that is the greatest of all of the means of thabat. The path of the Sahaba and the Salaf, that is the Sabil al Mu'mineen. That is the path of the believers. And whomsoever is shown it, and, he is made, and that path is made clear to him, and then he strays from it, he is destroyed. Destroyed in this life and destroyed in the hereafter. From the second of those means is to have Iman. True Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Based upon that, the performance of righteous deeds. And Allah the Most High has said in his book, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَيُضِلُّ اللَّهُ الظَّالِمِينَ وَيَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ 
Allah will keep firm those who believe with the word that stands firm in this life and in the hereafter. And Allah will cause to go astray those who are the wrongdoers, the dhalimeen. And Allah does whatever he wills. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised those who believe and work righteous deeds that Allah will keep them firm with the word that stands firm in the life of this world and in the hereafter. Qatada rahimahullah ta'ala from the tabi'een he said as for the life of this world Allah will keep them firm with goodness and righteous deeds and in the hereafter with firmness in the grave. And this is when they are questioned. When you are questioned in your grave. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say after he would bury a companion of his in his grave he would say make dua for your companion for indeed right now he is being questioned. Make dua for his firmness in the grave. For indeed right now he is being questioned. So that qawlu thabit is important my brothers and sisters in this life. Because if you are upon thabat in this life, you will be upon thabat in your grave. Ibn Kathir explained that he refers to the questioning in the grave. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ That Allah will keep firm those who believe with the word that stands firm in the life of this world and in the hereafter. In the hereafter, it is the questioning in the grave. When the angels munkar and nakir they come to the dead person in his grave and they sit him up. And they are severe black and blue angels. And they will sit him up. And they will not see from them any weakness or any softness or any gentleness. These are severe angels who have come with severe questions. Man rabbuk, ma dinuk, man nabiyuk. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who is your prophet? So they will ask him about these affairs. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? What do you say about that man? What do you say about that man that was sent among you? The one who was firm upon Iman. And he spoke with that strong word in this life, the word that stands firm in the life of this world. The kalima la ilaha illallah. He spoke with it. That person he will say, my Lord is Allah. Rabbi Allah. Dini al-Islam. My religion is Islam. And that man, that man was Muhammad. Rasulullah, he came to us with clear signs and we believed in him. As for the hypocrites, the munafiqeen, and those who did not believe in him or in his message, they will not be granted firmness and they will not be able to answer. They are those who worshipped idols. They worshipped Christ. They worshipped the cross. They follow the religions of atheism and Darwinism. And those who made halal that which Allah had made haram. Those who believe in that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to disbelieve. فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ That which Allah has commanded the one who disbelieves in the taghut. We have been commanded to disbelieve in the false deities of Darwinism, atheism, Hinduism, Buddhism, the worship of the cross, and other than that, and the religion of the Jews, 
we have been commanded to disbelieve in all of those wa yu'min billah and then to believe in Allah and that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam with so the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was constant in performing righteous deeds and he would encourage his companions with the same even if those deeds were small but consistent so the sahaba radiyallahu anhum they would pray their five daily prayers without fail they would fast in the month of ramadan and they would fast the optional fasts and sometimes they would leave them off they would be good to their wives and good to their children they would be kind to their parents and serve them in their old age they would give charity to the poor they would make zikr of allah and seek forgiveness many times a day they would pray in the night even if it was for a small portion of the night a few rak'ahs they would be good to their neighbors they would recite the book of allah they would smile in the face of a believer they would seek the company of the pious and so on these are some of the righteous deeds that each and every one of us can do throughout the day to keep us firm upon the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the third of those affairs is keeping away from sins from those acts of disobedience those ma'asi and dhunub through the company of the righteous from amongst the salafiyin keeping the company of ahlu sunnah ahlu sunnah wal hadith the people of salafiyya and the da'wah to salafiyya in the company of the righteous you'll be busy with good and you will not be diverted so shaitan prefers the lone believer when the believer is isolated from the rest of the believers then the shaitan takes that opportunity just like the lone sheep that is taken by the wolf the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith that has been collected by imam ahmed in al-musnad that verily the shaitan is like a wolf among sheep he sees is the lone sheep that wanders and strays from the flock so beware of wandering into the mountain passes instead cling to the jamaa and cling to the community aw kama qala alayhi salatu wassalam qatada bin diama from the tabi'in who died in the year 118 after the hij after the hijra he said he said by allah we have not seen a man except that he keeps companionship with people who are like him and resemble him so keep company with the righteous from the servants of allah so you can be with them or you can be like them al a'mash also from the tabi'in who died in 148 after the hijra he said that the salaf would not ask anything about a person beyond three questions who he walks with who he enters upon and who among the people does he take as his friends companionship is tremendously important my brothers and sisters even when you travel you travel with good companions when you sit and eat you sit and eat with good companions because they will remind you of allah if you are with the sinners then you will take the habits of the sinners if you are alone away from the jamaa away from the community of believers then the wolf will come and he is the shaitan he is the wolf amongst the people the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if there are three people in a village or three people in the open desert who do not establish the prayer among themselves meaning in jamaa there are three of them and that's all there is yet even three cannot gather together to just to establish the prayer then the shaitan has gained mastery over them so then he said fa alayka bil jamaa so upon you is to cling to the jamaa for only for the wolf only eats the lone sheep 
the sheep that struggles away, the sheep that veers away from the flock, that's the one that the wolf devours. The hadith reported by Abu Dawood and declared Hassan by Sheikh Al-Albani. Likewise, my brothers and sisters, you should be resolute in keeping away from that which Allah has prohibited. You want thabat, you want firmness, you want steadfastness. Then keep away from that which Allah has prohibited, that which Allah has made haram. And nurture your wives and your children and your families upon that. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu said that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised me with nine matters. He said, firstly, do not commit shirk with Allah even if you are cut to, be, cut to pieces and burned alive. Secondly, never deliberately abandon the prayers that have been obligated. Whoever abandons them deliberately has lost the protection of Allah. Thirdly, do not drink alcohol. Do not take intoxicants. And that could be wine. It could be alcoholic drinks. It could be smoking hashish or marijuana. It could be taking drugs. Anything that intoxicates, as the Prophet ﷺ said, is, is khamar. And khamar is prohibited. He said, do not drink alcohol because it is the key to every evil. Fourthly, obey your parents. And if they command you to spend upon them from your worldly possessions, then spend upon them. Fifthly, do not contend with the rulers, even if you think you are more worthy. Sixthly, do not flee from the battlefield, even if you are to be killed and your companions abandon you. Even if they flee, you don't flee. Stand and stay firm for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seventhly, spend from your wealth upon your family. Eighthly, do not cease to discipline them. And ninthly, instill the fear of Allah in your families, the mighty and majestic. The fear of Allah, the mighty and majestic into your families. This hadith reported by Al-Bukhari in Al-Adab Al-Mufrad. And Shaykh Al-Albani declared it to be Hassan. So these are just three of the means that will bring about thabat in this life. And you can see the importance of each and every one of them. And there are many more that can be mentioned. Inshallah, in the next part of this khutbah, maybe I can summarize the final three out of the many that could be, that could be spoken about. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us thabat in this life and in the hereafter. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Come forward, brothers and sisters. Come forward, brothers as much as you are able, so that the brothers at the back can pray and sit down. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wassalatu wassalamu ala shrafil mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een amma ba'd From those affairs, my brothers and sisters, that will give us thabat, give us firmness in our religion is to make dua to Allah to protect your heart from misguidance. And take the path of, to salvation by clinging to the way of the Salaf. This is the way of the Rasikhun fil ilm. This is the way of those firmly grounded in knowledge, the Imams of guidance and piety. Allah, this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about them, وَالْرَاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ يَقُولُونَ آمَنَّا بِهِ كُلٌّ مِّنْ عِنْدِ رَبِّنَا وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُوا إِلَّا أُلُوا الْأَلْبَابِ رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قَلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَحَّابِ And those who are firmly grounded in knowledge, they say, we believe in it. We believe in what? We believe in the book. Who says that? Those firmly grounded in knowledge, Rasikhun fil ilm. They say we believe in the book. We believe in the revelation. The whole of it, all of it, is from our Lord. 
and none receives admonition except men of understanding. These are the ones who say, Rabbana la qalubana. They say, Our Lord, let not our hearts deviate after you have guided us and grant us mercy from yourself. Truly, you are the bestower. So asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to deviate our hearts, not in sin, not in transgression, not in bid'ah, not in shirk, not in kufr, not in ridda, not in zandaqa. That Allah keeps our hearts firm and he does not deviate our hearts after he has guided us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant, grant us firm hearts and steadfast, steadfastness upon the sunnah. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to oft repeat the supplication, Ya muqallib al-qaloob, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O oh, you who turns the hearts, establish my heart upon your religion. Fifthly, when you invite others to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it makes you firm upon your deen. When you invite people to worship Allah, to obey him and to obey his messenger, this establishes in our hearts firmness as this was the task of the messengers and those who follow them. So you should begin with your families, your relatives, your friends, your neighbors. And remember that da'wah, my brothers and sisters, is done through words, through deeds and by example. So make sure that your deeds and your example do not contradict the sunnah. Do not contradict what you are calling others to. Let it not be a case that you say to the people, do as I say and not as I do. That is not the way of the anbiya. The anbiya would not say to the people, do something and I will do something else. Abadan. That is not our way. Make sure that your deeds and your example do not contradict the sunnah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And be upon that which you call to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي عَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَسِيرَةٍ Say to them, O Prophet, this is my path. I invite to Allah with sure and certain knowledge, I and those who follow me. And exalted is Allah, and I am not from those who associate partners with him. So my brothers and sisters, when a believer shows concern for the guidance of the people, Allah rewards him by increasing him in guidance and firmness, tabat upon the truth. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Allah said, and who is better in speech than the one who invites to Allah and does righteous deeds? And then he says, indeed, I am from the Muslims. In these words of the preacher who calls to Allah, there is an expression of firmness upon the religion. What does he say? وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Indeed, I am from the Muslims. So there is firmness and there is, a, there is an emphatic statement from the caller to Allah. That he is calling the people to Allah and he is telling them that I am from those who have submitted to Allah. He is not hesitant. He is not hesitant. He is not shy. And he does not conceal the truth. So Allah gives the callers to the book and to the sunnah upon the understanding of the sahaba steadfastness that is not found in other than them from the people. The final affair that I'll finish with today, the sixth affair, is being firm requires sabr. In times of trial, hardship, affliction, when desires are presented, when lusts are presented, when people offer you wealth, offer you women, offer you status. When affliction befalls, sabr is required in all of these situations. When you are suffering with pain, when you are turned away, when you are exiled or boycotted or abandoned and your family are killed. 
And the people want to burn you and cut you to pieces because of your tawheed. Sabar. And it is from the greatest of the means of attaining a thabat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sta'inu bis sabri wa salah. Inna Allah ma'a sabirin. Allahu Akbar. O you who believe, seek the help of Allah through patience and through prayer. Indeed, Allah is with the patient ones. And likewise, the Prophet wasallam said in a hadith collected by Imam al-Bukhari, whoever remains patient, Allah will bestow patience upon him. And he who is satisfied with, with what he has, Allah will make him self-sufficient. And there is no gift better and vaster than sabr, than having patience, than being granted patience. And it is narrated from Abu Umayyah, who said that I came to Abu Tha'alaba al-Khushani radiallahu anhu and said to him, what do you say about this ayah? He said, which ayah? So I recited to him the words of Allah. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu alaykum anfusakum la yadurrukum man dalla idha ahtadaytum. O you who believe upon you is to be concerned about yourselves. As for those who go astray, they do not harm you as long as you are guided. Abu Tha'alaba said to Abu Umayyah, by Allah, you have asked me about something that I know of in this matter. For I asked Allah's Messenger وسلم, regarding this very same ayah. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, rather, you must enjoin one another to do what is good and forbid one another from what is evil but when you see miserliness taking place and being obeyed and desires being followed and worldly de desires being given preference everyone being amazed with his own opinion then take care of yourself and leave alone what the people are doing because ahead of you are days which require endurance and patience in which endurance will be like holding on to hot coals. And whomsoever acts correctly upon the truth in that time will have the reward of 50 men from among you who does that deed. So we ask Ya Rasulullah, they will get 50 of their reward or 50 of our reward. The Prophet Sallallahu said they will get 50 of their reward. The hadith reported by Abu Dawood. So in times of hardship, in times of ghurba, in str of strangeness, when people are going astray to the right and to the left, whoever holds on to the deen in that time is like holding on to hot coals. And for him there is 50 times the reward. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would remind his companions to be patient. And that Jannah is the reward of the one who holds fast to the deen of Allah. And is patient upon the harms that come to him regardless of how severe they are. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed by Yasir and his son Ammar and the mother of Ammar, Sumayya. While they were suffering at the hands of the Kuffar in Mecca, and they were suffering because they said, our Lord is Allah. So when the Prophet Sallallahu would pass them by and he would see how they were being tortured and suffering, eventually Sumayya radiallahu anha, she was killed at the hands of Abu Jahl with a spear that was forced into her abdomen. So when the Prophet Sallallahu used to pass by this noble family, he used to say, Sabran ala yasir. Be patient, O family of Yasir. Indeed, your appointment is in Jannah, meaning your destination is Jannah. So let us work righteous deeds, my brothers and sisters, and remain steadfast and firm and patient upon the deen of Allah. And ask Allah constantly to give you thabat in this life and the next life.
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us, keep us and our families and our communities and the Muslims firm and steadfast upon, uh, steadfast upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and guide them to that which is best. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een.